In this lecture, we will talk about point cloud data analysis. So we will first describe characteristics of uh, USA and UAS and LiDAR-based point cloud data. Then we will describe the processing of these point clouds. Uh, then we will move on and uh, explain how to compute digital elevation models. Uh, and how to analyze these models uh, from the point cloud data. And finally, we will finish with a more advanced voxel-based analysis and we will look at some vertical profiles from multiple return data. So what are point clouds? Here you can see that the point clouds are in general then set of points which are defined by their coordinates in three-dimensional space. Uh, they can be derived in many different ways. We will be focusing on point clouds that are directly measured using LiDAR and on point clouds that are derived from overlapping images using structure from motion. And in this image, you can see the visualization of a point cloud derived by structure from motion on large screen in Hunt library. And you can re recognize some features from your previous data, such as one of the buildings uh, uh, that we measured at Mid Pines at our um, uh, test area. So we described the structure from motion already in previous lectures. Now, how are the LiDAR point clouds uh, acquired? Uh, uh, the major difference between the structure from motion when, where we were working with overlapping imagery is that the LiDAR point cloud uh, data are measured as a time of pulse return. And this time is then uh, measured very, very, with very high accuracy and then converted to distance between the sensor and the measured object from which the pulse was, uh, pulse was reflected. And the 3D coordinates are then derived based on this distance based on the position of the platform uh, uh, using GPS and inertial uh, navigation system. And then uh, the result of these measurements is a dense point cloud uh, that reflects uh, not only the surface of the uh, of the bare earth, but also everything that is on it. And the main uh, difference between structure from motion and LiDAR is that the LiDAR pulse, pulse uh, can penetrate the tree canopy, can penetrate the vegetation, and uh, uh, leading to multiple pulse returns, or very dense point cloud, uh, which actually can get through the, uh, through the vegetation, while uh, you can get point cloud that goes beyond the veget uh, below the vegetation canopy if there are big enough openings when you are working with structure from motion and with imagery and it's much more challenging to derive them. So that's why everybody's interested in multiple return point uh, in LiDAR, uh, putting LiDAR on UAS so that we can get uh, we can capture also the structure of the vegetation in a more accurate and more comprehensive way than what structure from motion allows. Uh, here you can see it even better, like on this image, the, the yellow points are first return points, brown points are second return uh, points. So you can see, for example, here these uh, uh, second return points can be uh, above ground, so the second or third return or last return doesn't mean that it's ground. Many of them are above ground, uh, uh, but they allow to capture in this way also the, the vegetation structure. Here is uh, even better illustration about how these multiple returns work and what they capture. You can see that even the uh, uh, even the first returns in many 
uh, cases can uh, get through the canopy and reach the ground like in this uh, in this case then the second return there is uh, fewer of them and usually the fourth returns are very few depending on uh, the type of lidar uh, another thing to remember about multiple returns that the uh, second and third return they don't necessarily would have uh, the same coordinate horizontal coordinates as first return depending on the scan angle so their coordinates would be slightly shifted uh, and that's uh, good to remember for example if you are looking for multiple returns based on the horizontal coordinates uh, you would have to take this into the uh, consideration but usually the, the information about the uh, return number is included in the uh, in the data so how do the <coughs> lidar point cloud, cloud data look like so what you get is the set of xyz three-dimensional uh, coordinates that that uh, define the location of the of each point and then it is optional return number that's almost always included if you have multiple return data intensity is measured and included uh, it can be used for certain applications and if the data were processed and classified they would include also the class and there is a standard uh, set of classes defined for the in the uh, uh, in the lidar data format uh, there could be additional data such as scan direction and we will explain why it is important and uh, also rgb <coughs> if the uh, they are usually derived in combination with imagery or they can be measured directly so here is how the lidar point cloud looks like <coughs> Uh, with the uh, in our area so you can recognize that this is the uh, this is the field that uh, we have been working with um, and you can see the the vegetation that it has multiple returns here is the building uh, uh, that we have measured but uh, another thing to notice on this data that you will not see in the structure from motion data is the swath overlap so you can see and it actually has two edges this is one this is another one and uh, uh, and you can based on these swaths you can also um, see what was the direction of flight which is sometimes useful uh, sometimes useful to know so this is the lidar data and the, they are visualized in plus io which is the the point cloud viewer and you will be uh, using it in your assignment here is a zoom in into lidar point cloud and in particularly notice how the points are distributed all the way from the canopy of the tree all the way to the ground and you can see it even better on these isolated trees um, also notice the density of points and then depending on the uh, on the direction of flight this wall of this building doesn't really have any points now let's compare it with structure from motion point cloud so again we will have uh, xyz coordinates remember that these were uh, derived from overlapping imagery and because uh, we are working with images we also get rgb so so this information is uh, is uh, uh, provided with the structure from motion point cloud but as you can see there is no uh, no return number and uh, uh, classification also needs to be done separately there can be additional data for example infrared channel if you have a multispectral camera and here is how the point cloud looks like for uh, again for our area you can uh, immediately notice the, the 
very different capture of the uh, air of the individual trees so you get the canopy but you don't have the the entire structure of the of the vegetation here you have another one uh, and then the on the building you you may recall how it looked like with the lidar data and you can clearly see here how much denser this structure from motion uh, uh, point cloud is and uh, here is the same point cloud but now colored using the RGB information derived from the imagery. And uh, what are the formats? How, uh, what are the formats that are used to exchange the LiDAR data that you will be actually working with? Uh, the older data you can still get uh, in human readable format as ASCII, XYZ. It's usually just the XYZ points. Uh, sometimes you will get also the return number, but uh, uh, most of the LiDAR data are distributed in industry standard LAS format or its compressed form LAZ format. And uh, uh, the detailed description of this for format is here. This is a link, so please click on this link and look at this specification, especially look at the tables that explain what is in the header, what is in each record, what, what kind of information is there. And it also specifies the classes for classified uh, LIS data. So that's really important to understand when you, uh, uh, when you retrieve the information from the uh, from your LIS file to understand what that output is actually telling you. Then another useful link is USGS LiDAR based specification. This is not a format. Uh, it is a specification. It is specification for the survey LiDAR surveys and uh, uh, it explains you some of the terminology that you will see when you try to download the, the LiDAR data, especially the accuracy of uh, and point density for different levels like QL1, QL2, that you will see when you uh, try to access and download the data. <clears throat> So, so this is the basic uh, information about the point clouds and now let's talk about point cloud data processing.